Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss a numerical on balancing of V engines. So v engines are basically the combinations of two connecting rods in such a way that two connecting rods as a combined effort they move a single crankshaft and the cylinders they are also inclined at certain angles so in the question it is given that the axis they are inclined at right angles to each other that means if these are two cylinders with pistons they are at an angle of 90 degree to each other now the weight of each piston is 2 kilogram that means let's say if the weight of each piston is small m so small m is 2 kilogram and the weight of connecting rod is given for both of them it is 2.8 kilogram the weight of the rotating parts is given as 1.8 kilogram. The length of connecting rod L is 400 mm and its center of mass is given as 100 mm from the crank pin center. Stroke is given as 160 mm. So when the piston it moves to and fro or it does the reciprocating motion in a piston, sorry in a cylinder, the distance between its extreme positions is known as the stroke, the maximum distance it can move inside the cylinder this distance is the stroke so we have to show that the engine can be balanced by revolving and the primary forces because of the counter mass and the magnitude of center of mass from crankshaft and the value of resultant secondary force for the speed of 840 rpm so we are already given the speed which is 840 rpm so omega becomes 2 pi n upon 60 it is 88 uh, radian per second Length of both the connecting rods is given L that is 400 mm. Now from where we got this value of the R which is the length of the crank or the radius of the crank. Now see the piston stroke is given which is 160 mm right. So for the piston to move from one position one extreme position to another extreme position in that distance the crank right it rotates 180 degree that means this is the diameter so this 160 is 160 of the stroke of the cylinder is equal to the diameter of crank so its radius become so 1 is 60 upon 2 which is 80 mm so n is what l upon r it is 5 now we are given that the angle between both the uh, cylinders of the uh, system of the engine they are at 90 degree so we have already considered that the angle which they make with the x-axis is alpha so 2 alpha for both of them so alpha and alpha so 2 alpha is 90 degree alpha comes out to be 45 degree now we are already given that the center of mass of the connecting rod is at the distance of 100 mm from the crank pin center so crank pin is at point A so the center of mass is lying somewhere here at a distance of 100 mm right in both the cases so whatever we do it will be into 2 so can we distribute the mass at the point A or at the crank pin it is 1.8 which is the mass of the rotating parts plus the part of the mass of the connecting rod which is lying at the crank pin which is the total mass into this distance which is 300 upon 400 into 2 because for both the systems this is this ratio is for one connecting rod and because there are two connecting rods so it becomes into 2 considering that there is one only one crank pin so the total mass becomes 6 kilogram so what is the unbalanced force it is m r omega square which is 6 r omega square now the total mass of the reciprocating parts is the connecting rod which is 2 kilogram plus the part of the mass that is lying at this shaft at, at this uh, piston. So it will be 2.8 into 100 upon 400 right because the other part of this is lying at the crank pin. So what they have done they have actually dynamically equivalent reduction is being done for the connecting rod which we have already studied so we can say or we can assume that the connecting rod can be replaced by two point masses one at the crank pin and one at the gadget pin right so the total reciprocating parts will be the two 
which is the mass of the reciprocating parts plus the part of the connecting rod which is 2.8 into 100 this distance upon 400 so it comes out equal to 2.7 kilogram so the resultant primary force will be is mr omega square along the crank so because of this reciprocating parts it is 2.7 r omega square now the total unbalanced forces is because of the revolving parts and the reciprocating parts which is 8.7 r omega square now we are saying that to balance this 8.7 r omega square we have to place a counter mass let's say m dash at some radius r dash in such a way that both the this counter mass balances all the unbalanced force so m dash r dash is already given which is 100 into omega square is equal to 8.7 r omega square now the speed for both the systems will remain same so it will cancel out and we already know the radius for the this crank is half of the stroke which is 80 and we know the mass so we can calculate what should be the counter mass added for the system now the second thing that we have to calculate is the resultant secondary force if the speed is 840 rpm right so we know the resultant secondary force is this root 2 mr omega square n into sine 2 theta so we can calculate we know what is theta it is 90 degree we know m we know r omega is already known n is already known so we place all the values and we get this answer right and to find the maximum value so maximum is what when 2 theta is 90 degree so when we place the value we get 473.1 newton right so if the question would have asked what will be the secondary force in the system we will place theta directly in the system but the question is saying the maximum value for the system therefore okay sorry alpha is 90 degree theta is not 90 degree therefore we are getting the answer in terms of theta and the system will give the maximum value when theta that means the angle which the crank turns from the x-axis right it is theta so when it is 90 degree we will get the maximum value of the secondary force